Um, first, I'd like to give all praises on to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, and double honors onto the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And honors to you brothers out there in the highways and the byways, teaching this word in all sincerity and in truth. And um, in this uh, lesson, I want to go through Revelation 21st chapter. And um, I'm specifically choosing Revelations because with these um, Christians, what they like to do is um, when they get confronted with the truth of the Holy Scriptures and it's shown that their doctrine is not um, in agreement with the, with the Bible, what they like to do is say, oh, you guys are reading out the Old Testament, which is, which is erroneous. We read the whole scriptures and there's the, in terms of doctrine, there's no difference between the New Testament writings and the Old Testament writings. All right. It's all consistent and, all, and it's all the word of the Lord. In fact, the New Testament writings were documenting the, the, um, the fulfillments of the, the so-called Old Testament writings, the prophecies. And exhorting the brethren to look for the remainder of the prophecies to be fulfilled. All right, it was never um, anything to do with uh, a new word or the Lord changing the script and diverting from the original mission and the original plan. All right, the, the new covenant, which is made in the blood of Yahweh Shai, is established so that. The covenant the Lord made with Abraham is not broken as concerning Abraham's seed, which is the children of Israel, Jacob. All right. So the, the New Testament, the new covenant is a fulfillment of the covenant the Lord made with Abraham, wherein the seed of Jacob, which is the seed of Abraham, will not is not forsaken and the Mosai will be a God unto that seed and that seed will be a people unto the Lord. And it's that simple. All right. And what we're saying makes sense. And that's why these guys get angry when we when we go and we correlate and we go and we reference prophecies in the Torah and the Tanakh, which prove our point. They get hurt because they can't do the same thing. They only have a rhetoric or, or a, 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 a um you know, a gimmick that they could push out there. Oh, God loves everyone. Everyone can be saved. And they, they basically pin that on the mis and misunderstanding of a few scriptures. But they can't, the, the whole entirety of the Bible doesn't back up their position. And then what ends up happening is contradiction. But the Bible doesn't contain contradiction. And the true men of the Lord will not be contradicted. All right, we the, the scriptures don't wrestle against each other. The scriptures are in agreement because it's one word. All right, so with that being said, let me read Revelation 1 and 1 because I suppose you don't get no more New Testament right in the, than Revelations. The revelation of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, which God gave unto him to shoot unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So these are the things that we're looking for now certain things in the book of revelations have been uh, uh um, fulfilled and certain things we're still looking for i.e the coming of our lord and the establishment of the kingdom of heaven all right which is not a new prophecy but rather an old prophecy repeated and we're going to show you that servants which must shortly come to pass and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant john who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach and of all things that he saw. And Yahweh Shai, the scripture tells you that the spirit of Yahweh Shai, who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ, is a spirit of prophecy. Because Yahweh Shai came to fulfill. He came to fulfill. He is the agent by which the, the, the promises and the prophecies are going to be fulfilled in regards to to, to, to the nation of Israel and the other nations because Yahweh Shah is going to bring judgment on the other nations as prophesied and he's going to save the, the, the nation of Israel as prophesied that's why the scripture says he is the, the, um, the, the author and finisher of our faith because it is Yahweh Shah who is going to be that agent to bring the salvation which was prophesied 
to usher in the kingdom which is prophesied and promised to the seed of Abraham and therefore fulfilling the covenant that the Lord made with, with, with um, our forefather Abraham regarding his seed which if you you know you can go back and, and read previous uh, uh, sorry watch previous videos I've done on the seed of Abraham and you'll see that all the way through the scriptures the Lord consistently let it be known that the things he was doing concerning Israel and concerning their salvation and concerning mercy towards Israel was all down to the fact that the Lord made a, a covenant with Abraham regarding that seed which is Israel and no one else is a part of that seed only you, in order to be of the seed of Abraham you need to be from the lineage of Abraham Isaac and Jacob and then spiritually you have to be filled with the faith of Abraham all right to be accepted see that but that goes over their heads that's why they don't understand Galatians the third chapter all right it's not saying that anyone regardless of your seed you can now become the seed of Abraham no 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 no. you are what you are <laughs> all right now this is um revelations 21 and 1 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize something on the blue letter called the treasury of knowledge so let me give you a quick background on the treasury of knowledge you see <clears throat> these you see these that's why we say these these Christians are hypocrites and most of these you see at one point they will um they will, like for instance these so-called Jews they can go in they can go into the scriptures and say they're the chosen people of blah 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 and none of these so-called Christians will argue and say no there ain't no chosen people blah 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 all this crap right they ain't gonna question that they'll let that slide but when we the Hebrew Israelites do the same thing and go even third further and prove it, right? They're going to basically totally uh, uh, come up against what we're doing as if to say they're against that in general. But they're not because when the so-called Jews do it, they don't have a problem. But when we do it, they have a problem. That shows you that they're, they're um, biased and that shows you that they're hypocrites and they have no honor. And it's the same thing when we go into the scriptures and we reference different scriptures, they say we're doing Hebrew hopscotch, but their own scholars attempt to do the same thing. And nothing is spoken of that because they're hypocrites. So when you go into the blue letter Bible and this is vocab Malone, I don't know if vocab Malone, he's, um, he's familiar with the blue letter Bible, but there's actually a section on the blue letter Bible called the treasury of knowledge. In fact, if you get any decent Bible, right? In fact, let's get uh, Bible with uh, uh, right. So if you look at this, this is a typical study Bible. <clears throat> now this one has commentary at the bo bottom, but this is not what I want you to to focus on. If you look at the, the page of this particular Bible. If you look in the middle, it's got a center column. Now, what that center column does, the column that's in the center is, as you're reading through the precepts here, you can actually go to the column, and what it will do is it will offer correlating scriptures to that particular precept. All right, but when we do that, they call it they, they call it Hebrew hopscotch. But you could you, most if you want to if you get a good Bible, the Bible will contain these precepts now sometimes they go off on their understanding but sometimes they get it right but they do attempt to do that and they know that to fully understand the scriptures you have to correlate one scripture with another precept upon precept line upon line here a little and there a little you see but when we do it it's hebrew hopscotch you see now Volker malone isn't going to do a video asking that all bibles created like this to be destroyed they, they need to be brought back because that's hopscotch you're jumping around in the bible right any decent bible i've ever bought i, I don't buy bibles without this column and then sometimes what happens if you get a really good one you'll have enough space in there where you can add your own precepts in there because we we're, we're the ones that really take it to the, the level it should be on but like i said you go to any decent study bible see you go and get that center column Oh, there you go. That's even better. And you, you get the precept and then it will give you other precepts which correlate. Like I said, sometimes they go off, but sometimes they get it right. 
So when you go to the Blue Letter uh, Bible, there's a good tool on there called the Treasury of Knowledge. Treasury of Scripture Knowledge. All right, and it says the Treasury of Scripture Knowledge, henceforth TSK, is a helpful tool that correlates. Now the word correlate means to find a relationship between. Co-relate. Yeah, relate together. Is a helpful tool that correlates every passage of scripture to other passages that relate in one way or another. So it's allowing you to compound or evolve your understanding. Which, by the way, we're taking that word evolve back. The word evolve has nothing to do with changing from one animal to another. It's about maturity. It's about unfolding. It's about uh, increasing in understanding. That's what true evolution is. And that's what this, this truth is all about. This truth is all about evo evolution. Unfolding the books. All right. Revealing the books. Revealing the knowledge. That's evolution. All right. So you, you're supposed to be able to use this treasury of knowledge to evolve your, your understanding of the scriptures. All right. To grow, to mature. It says, in order to make use of this tool, we must first enter into the Bible where the bulk of the Blue Letter Bible study tools are available. And it shows you how to use it. Now, I'm going to show you how to use it. All right. And even the Blue Letter said, because they didn't put all this together, they, they can't affirm everything in there. You know, fair enough. We I say the same thing. Like I said, sometimes they go off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Revelations 21. All right, now this Revelation 21 is going into what we are, the, the ending of our faith. Revelation 21 is all about the ending of our faith. It's all about the establishment of the kingdom of heaven. All right, and and um, this, this is the end of our faith right here. All right, and it's going into describing the kingdom of heaven and so forth. Now, <coughs> Revelations 21 and 1. So what you're going to do is, you same thing if you're on the website, but on your on your app, you, you, you click on, we're, we're clicking on verse 1. So verse 1 says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Now remember, even Peter referenced this terminology. That we seek after a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteous. So Peter was hopscotching when he mentioned that. When, when Peter uh, spoke of the new heavens and the new earth, he was actually uh, alluding to a scripture that is back in Isaiah 65, which is a prophecy. Like I said, the New Testament, the, the so-called New Testament writings are completely and wholly based upon the foundation of the prophecies in the so-called Old Testament. And you can't, you can't uh, uh, um, di distinguish between the two or you can't put a separation between the two. Okay. That's why Paul said, though, in the way that they call heresy, so worship I after the way of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and the prophets. And what was Paul telling them? Everything I'm doing and everything I'm teaching is in accordance with the law and the prophets. There is no, there's no contradiction, right? Because they were trying to accuse him of teaching heathens, but he wasn't. Those heathens were actually Israelites that were scattered among the nations, man. So there was no heresy. He wasn't, he, wasn't, he wasn't seeking out a people that the Lord hadn't chosen. These were Israelites. All right. And you go to John the, the 11th chapter and um, what was it? Caiaphas broke it down about the children of God that were scattered abroad. Anyway, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. So let's see. Let's have a look at the treasury of knowledge for this verse here so the treasury of knowledge all right so what it does it breaks it down to a new for and there so we're going to start with a new and this is the correlating passages using the king james version and straight away isaiah 65 and 17 so this is going back to a prophecy this what we what is what john said he saw in Revelation 21 and 1 is a fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah 65 and 17. So it's the same prophecy that's going to be fulfilled. So if you go to Isaiah 65 and 17, it says, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem 
a rejoicing and her people a joy. So who is it pertaining to? The Israelites. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And who's the people of the Lord? The Israelites. The seed of Abraham. See, the, it goes back to the, 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 the covenant the Lord made with Abraham that 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 seed right which that covenant the lord made with isaac and jacob that's the fathers of the promise the fathers of the covenants that seed would be the people of the lord and that seed was and is jacob and his 12 uh, uh well the 12 uh, nations which came out of him, the 12 tribes and i will rejoice in jerusalem and jacob and joy in my people and the voice of weeping shall no more be heard in her nor the voice of crying all right isaiah 66 and 22 for as the new heavens and the new earth which i will make shall remain before me saith the lord so shall your seed and your name remain and who was this what seed was it talking about The Israelites. All right. Let's go up and you see what the. There, there, there we go. Jerusalem. The whole chapters about Jerusalem. May go. Who's getting comforted? I will send you a comforter. Isaiah 66 13 as one whom his mother comforted so will I comfort you and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem it's talking about Israel the people of the Lord all right it's mentioning the tribe of Levi and all that what are you guys talking about same thing you go into Isaiah 65 it's talking about Israel it ain't talking about the other nations all right Let's read down a little bit there shall be no more dense an infant of days nor an old man that hath not filled his yet days for the child see this is why you got to use that correlation and then you can get more understanding of what revelation 21 and 1 is talking about and who it's talking about nor an old man that hath not filled his days for the child shall die a hundred years old but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed all right and that basically is, uh, is poetic for look we're going to live forever so if a man, if a, if if a, if a child die a hundred years, it would it would deem it to a curse. But a child isn't gonna die a hundred years. It's just showing you that we're gonna live forever, man. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. Who's that talking about? The Israelites, and that proves that the kingdom of heaven is gonna be on earth. You see, that's why the scripture says, "The meek shall inherit the earth." The meek is the elect of Israel. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. Which is which is what? According to the curses of Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter, that's the condition that the Israelites have been in. But the Lord is going to... What did Yahawashai say? He nailed the curse to the cross. Meaning Yahawashai has taken away the curses through, through, through taking away our sins. That's why in the kingdom of heaven, we're not going to be under the curses no more. We're going to be blessed. <coughs> All right. And another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people and mine elect. Who's the elect? Israel. Right. And shall long enjoy the work of their hands. The word elect meaning chosen. The elect are the Israelites. All right. They shall not labor in vain nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them, meaning they come from Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, because those men were blessed of the Lord. Those men were blessed that their seed should be blessed. And it shall come to pass that therefore, before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock and dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all, in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. 
So let's go back to Revelations 21. And let's continue on. See how you just, we fleshed out a lot of understanding there. So Revelations 21 and 1 is all going back to Isaiah 65, Isaiah 66. Like we mentioned before, 2 Peter 3 and 13. Nevertheless, we according to his promise. Now, what does the promises go back to? The, pro the prophecies. The prophecies are promise, promises. Look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. And in Revelation 21 and 5, which we're going to get. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. And then 4. It says, Revelation 20:11, And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled, and there was found no place for them. And that's talking about these other nations, man. They're going to be judged. When the Lord comes back, he's coming back to judge these other nations as it is written. And that the Lord is going to curse them because the, the, what the, the, the covenant the Lord made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was that whoever cursed that seed would in turn be cursed. And whoever blessed that seed would be blessed. And you other nations have cursed the seed of Israel, beginning with Esau. So a curse is going to fall upon you. It's that simple, man. It ain't rocket science, man. Um, Isaiah and there, Isaiah goes back to Isaiah 27 and 1. In that day, the Lord, with his sore and great and strong sword, shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, and in and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Now that that serpent and that dragon, hey, hey you already know. <laughs> Isaiah 57 and 20. But the wicked are like which this not really that relevant. So let's that's why I said sometimes. They, they, you know, they don't hit the point. Isaiah 47 and 20. But the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. All right. So, they, you know, these ones are not really, the ones at the bottom are not really uh, correlating um, as much in terms of like, you know, the Leviathan one. But the rest of them, you know, um, 57 and 20, the wicked, you know, are like a troubled sea. And I stood, so, so what they're doing is anywhere where it kind of mentions C, they're trying to bring it up, up here. All right. But anyway, let's move on. Uh, like I said, you can't always go by, because sometimes they'll just bring up scriptures that might mention the same word. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, let's go back. But showing you, they know they know certain things. Uh, uh, this is the one that's going to be very interesting. Revelation twenty one and two, and I John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So let's see. So we got we already read Revelations one and one. Uh, so we can move on to the holy, right? Now, it's the holy city. Psalms 48 and 1. Psalms for the sons of Korah. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God in the mountain of his holiness. Now, what city is that? Jerusalem. The Israelites. Beautiful for situation. The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. Psalms 48 and 3. God is known in her places for a refuge. Psalms 87 and 3. Glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God. Isaiah 1 and 21. How is the faithful city becoming harlot? Now who is that? Who is that talking about? That's talking about the Israelites. Right? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodging it, but now murderers. And who were those murderers? The Israelites. But you see the Lord is going to flip that. And Israel is, once again is going to be filled with righteous judgment. See? Isaiah 52 and 1, awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. So who's who's being called to awaken? The Israelites. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. I mean, come on, man. Jeremiah 31 and 23. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. <laughs> As yet they shall use this speech in the land of Judah and in the cities thereof, when I shall bring again their captivity. 
So what's this scripture talking about right here? The Lord's uh, taking his people out of captivity. And that's exactly what the Lord's doing. Didn't not the Lord say, I come to set the captives three, free? The Lord, the, 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 the part of the salvation is not only freeing us from sin, but then ultimately freeing us from the hand of our enemies because of that sin. Right? The Lord blessed the O habitation of justice and mountain of holiness. Hebrews 11 and 10. For he looked for a city which have foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Hebrews 12 and 22. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Hebrews 13 and 14. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Yeah, the, in, in due time... The Lord is going to return us back to the land of Israel. And that's that's when the Lord is going to establish Jerusalem and it's going to be there forever. Now, back then, they were in Jerusalem. But what happened in 70 AD? You understand? It was it, it, That wasn't the kingdom of heaven. But when the Lord establishes Israel, when he returns, none of our cities shall ever be destroyed. Revelations 3 and 12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, right? Well, in order for you to have gone out in the first place, you had to be in it. He shall go no more out, meaning what? We, just go, we, we ain't going to stray. We ain't going to do what we did before. We ain't going to become lost sheep. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Some more scriptures going into Jerusalem. Uh, here we go. Here's some good ones here. Um, treasure this. So this is um, Isaiah 54 and 5. This is in regards to the, the, you know, for thy maker is thine husband. The Lord of hosts is his name and thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. The God of the whole earth shall he be called. Right? Because the Lord is the husband unto Israel. Isaiah 61 and 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments. And as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. Isaiah 62 and 4. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. Now, who have been termed forsaken? Israel. They say, oh, the Lord forsake Israel because what? We have gone into captivity. But the Lord hasn't forsaken Israel because the Lord is going to deliver Israel. As, as I, I mentioned before, because he will not forsake that seed, that seed of Abraham. But thou shalt be called Hifzibah, and thy land Bulah, for the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. All right? And then you got the scriptures all the way through, you know, John 3, 21. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This, my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. All right? Now, 2 Corinthians 11 and 2, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Yahweh Shai. All right? And then they got a few other scriptures talking about husbands, but, you know, really too relevant. All right? So, that was John 2. Let's get John 3. And this is where it's going to get real interesting. All right? So, this is... Uh, sorry, uh, the verse 3. This is Revelation 21 and 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Now, like I told you, this is a fulfillment. This is a fulfillment of the... Oh, yeah, let me go. run this path. This is a fulfillment of the covenant that the Lord made with Abraham concerning that seed. All right, so let's uh, go through some of these uh, scriptures here. So this 
is a some of the scriptures that come up when it speaks about the tabernacle all right leviticus 26 and 11 and i will set my tabernacle among you and my soul shall not abhor you now that was that was um we had to keep the law all right but but guess what we didn't keep the law so then now the lord had to come back and um provide a way for us to be redeemed so that the Lord can set his tabernacle among us again, again to fulfill the covenant. I will set my tabernacle among you and my soul shall not abort you. Verse 12. And I will walk among you and will be your God and you shall be my people. All right. Now the Lord would have done that in the first place under the old covenant that was made under Moses. If we had kept the law, but we couldn't keep the law. So <laughs> finding fault with us. The Lord made a new covenant on the on the better promises, man. Meaning this time we're gonna keep the law perfectly. So that the 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 the, the promises unto Abraham could be fulfilled. Alright, let's get some more. Isaiah twelve and six cry out and shout thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Oh, Ezekiel thirty seven and twenty seven. Right, my tabernacle also shall be with them, yea, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So Ezekiel the thirty seventh chapter, which is in which is talking about which we let's read it, is talking about Israel. It's showing you who that prophecy in Revelation twenty one is it and the third chapter is talking about. Right? Let's read it. Ezekiel thirty seven and twenty one and, and say unto them. Thus saith the Lord God. Now this is the promise. This is the prophecy that Revelation 21 and 3 is referencing to. So let's read very carefully of what it says is going to happen. Behold, I will take the children of Israel, the sons of Israel, from among the heathen. See, that's why we keep telling you the Gentiles that Paul was teaching were Israelites that were scattered among the heathen. The sons of God scattered abroad. I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side, uh, as it is written. Yahweh Shai said when he, he will come with the holy angels, and he's going to gather together his elect from the four corners of the earth, and gather them on every side, and bring them into their own land. And that's the holy Jerusalem coming down from heaven. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. All right? And one king shall be king to them all, and they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. And that's why when you read in Hebrews 8, it tells you about he's going to make a covenant with, with Judah and with Israel. And that covenant is going to bring them back together. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions, meaning we're not going to sin anymore. Under the New Testament, we're, we're gonna we're gonna keep the laws perfectly because the laws are gonna be written in our hearts. See, this is this is all about evolving. You see how when you go through the scriptures and you you correlate, now you evolve your understanding of the scriptures. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places. There's that's the salvation, Matthew one and twenty one shall save his people, wherein they have sinned. That's why the Lord had to bring bring uh, a redemption of sin. And will cleanse them. Well, what does the scripture say in regards to the, 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 the cleansing by the word? What, 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 why did the Lord say, call nothing I have made clean unclean? Because the Lord was going to cleanse Israel. And will cleanse them, so shall they be my people, and I will be their God. Again, fulfilling the word which the Lord spake unto Abraham. And David my servant shall be king over them, and they shall all... They shall all shall have one shepherd they shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them and they shall dwell in the land that i have given unto jacob my servant wherein your fathers have dwelt and they shall dwell therein even they and their children and their children's children forever and my servant david shall be their prince forever yeah so we, that shows you david's gonna live forever Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them, the Prince of Peace, 
it shall be an everlasting covenant with them and I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore who midst of who the Israelites my tabernacle also shall be with them yea I will be their God and they shall be my people and the heathen shall know that I am the I the Lord to sanctify Israel so who's going to be sanctified Israel what does the scripture say sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth so who was who is being sanctified by the gospel Israelites yeah that's them Hebrew hopscotch for you when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore so when we go back to Revelations 21 we understand that Revelation 21 and 3 is referencing and alluding back to the prophecy of Ezekiel 37 in which is regarding who the seed of Israel so, 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 so you can't get around that so, so, so you can't get around it yeah the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them be be with them and be their God let's go back to the cross reference so that was Ezekiel 37 Ezekiel 43 and 7 and he said unto me son of man the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever and my holy name shall the house of Israel no more defile neither they nor their kings by their whoredom nor by the carcasses of their kings in their high places all right and then it goes into john 14 and 23 i was your answer and said unto him if a man love me he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him you see second corinthians 6 and 16 and what agreement have the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God have said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Which proves the people that Paul was writing to in Corinth were Israelites. Because that, that statement was made towards Israel. Alright. And now look at this. Look what it's, it's going back to. They shall it's going all the way back to the covenant of Abraham and I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee and I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger or the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession and I will be their God and like I keep telling you it all's going back to fulfilling the covenant that the lord made with abraham that's why it's important to know the history jeremiah 31 and 33 but this shall be the covenant that i will make with the house of israel after those days saith the lord i will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and i will be their god and they shall be my people why because that was the covenant made with abraham concerning that seed Jeremiah 32 and 38, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. How many times is the Lord going to say the same thing before you people get it? Zechariah 13 and 9, and I will bring the third part, the third part of who? Israel, through the fire. Right? The third part represents the, that remnant, that elect, that would be delivered. And will refine them as silver is refined. Right? And will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say it is my people they shall say the Lord is my God all right again that's the the covenant being fulfilled and that's why only the scripture says what then Israel not received that which he seeketh for but the elect election have received it and the rest were blinded the rest who the two-third but the third the election the ones chosen for salvation will receive it and through that elect the entire nation shall be saved as it is written, all Israel shall be saved. Because it's that seed. Um, 2 Corinthians 6 and 18. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Again, that scripture there that's being quoted goes back to Isaiah. Alright, in fact, if we click on it, 
we go to 2 Corinthians 6 and 18 and we go to the cross reference and actually it might not come up in the cross reference I remember last time they tried to avoid it <laughs> yeah 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 uh, I'll have to find it hold on uh, where is it Yeah, this is the one. This is the scripture that it's going back to. Right? Isaiah 43 and 5. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from seed from the east and gather thee from the west. What seed? The seed of Abraham. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters, right, from the ends of the earth. Yeah? You understand? So let's go back. Uh, that shows you what's up, man. Uh, was there any more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where was he, man? No, no, no. We weren't even on that yet. Still on three. I might have to do an, another part to this. <sighs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Right, um... Hebrews 8 and 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and uh, write them in their hearts and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. Zechariah 8 and 8 down the bottom and I will bring them and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem and they shall be my people and it will be their God in truth and in righteousness. So it's all the way through the scriptures man because the Lord never changed man. I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. The reason why the sons of Jacob are not going to be consumed, the reason why the sons of Jacob are going to be delivered and are going to be blessed, is because it goes back to the covenant that the Lord made with Abraham, man. And you can't get around that. Okay? Anyway, I don't want to go on too long. I see that I might have to come back to the next verse, but... Gotta get ready to hit the plantation up. So, hopefully, you know, brothers have had their understanding um, uh, broadened, enlightened. You know, you've been evolved. You've gone through the process of evolution in this video, man, and your understanding has been uh, improved. So, with that, I'm gonna say shalom.